Welcome. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over some sales of mine from the past month or so. I've cherry picked these sales. These are not like every single sale in order. I wanted to focus on the ones that were ones that actually made sense because there's some stuff from older stuff that older buys that gradually is selling over time that I wouldn't really recommend that you um, that you do. If you want to maybe see a video of like the stuff that I shouldn't have bought that still sold and for how little it sold for, let me know. But well, today we're going to be focusing on the positives. We're going to be focused on some of the things that you should keep an eye out for. Starting this right over here. This is a Texas Instruments TI-84 plus graphing calculator. It's the yellow version. I actually thought the yellow would be more valuable than the regular TI-84. But actually this one is, in my opinion, uh, based upon comps, less valuable. This I listed it for forty-four ninety-five because that's where comps were. I thought I would get a best offer at like 38 or something like that. I got it for 8 or 9 bucks. It sold pretty much instantly within 20 minutes. I can imagine that there's some company or some organization that's just buying these as soon as they show up on eBay if it's priced right because of how quickly that happened. But generally speaking, these TI-84 calculators will sell really, really quickly, will sell at for a good price. So if you can get them at a good number, then I would recommend it. And if you're watching this video, you probably already know this. This is a brand that I personally like to sell. It's a brand called Ex Officio. I like to sell the sub-brand, like the Buzz Off Insect Shield category. Um, and you'll see it on the tag. Let me see if I can actually show you right here. And this is the tag for it. This sold for $19.95 plus shipping. It sold for full price. It took a month or two to sell. It's a woman's medium. This is a brand that I think more men wear than women just because it's more technical gear. But... I think I got it somewhere in like the $4 range, just generally what I like to pay for these. I wouldn't pay more than $8 for it. I know that for a fact. But in the in the $1 to $6 range, you're okay buying this in my opinion. Now, this is one that I don't know if I would buy it again. I, I would really want to check the sell through rate again before I did. I think it just sat for a couple months, but it might have also been seasonal. This is a brand called Rourke. It sold for $19.95 plus shipping. If you have experience selling this and you think it's one that is worthwhile, then just let me know below. But it did sell for full price plus shipping as pretty much as soon as spring buying started. So maybe I'm being a little bit um, harsh on the sell through rate just because it was winter. But $19.95 plus shipping, didn't get an offer or anything like that. Happy with the sale. It's a nice style and the material is good. It feels good. Uh, feels quality. So this is a brand that you probably are already selling. And if you're not, you, you should. This is a brand called Bonobos. Highly recommend it. This is a men's XL long. And it also had a kind of fun geometric print on it. You can kind of see in this picture on the bottom left over here what that print looked like. This is a brand you're generally going to be able to sell the basics in like the $15 to $25 range. When it has a more interesting print, you'll be able to sell it for more. I believe this sold for full price. Let me check. So yeah, this sold for a full price. It sold for $19.95 plus shipping. It sold fairly quick within a week or two. I could have priced it higher and tried to squeeze out a couple bucks out of it. But realistically, if I priced it higher, I would have priced it at $24.95 and still sold it at $19.95. So the fact that it sold $19.95 full price um, no offers or anything like that to me it's priced it was priced right i could understand and maybe you'll tell me in the comments that i'm underpricing this and feel free to but i really like when things sell quickly and i know that when i price bonobo stuff in this range it sells a lot quicker so it's baseball season and because it's baseball season you might want to be keeping an eye out for baseball gloves now a lot of times thrift stores as well as if you go to like a place like a flea market or swap meet they kind of know the deal that the good baseball gloves and baseball mitts can be pretty valuable this is one that i think i got for maybe two to five bucks something in that range it's a demerani 13 inch helix baseball glove uh, left-handed uh, i guess actually technically it's a softball glove I believe that this sold for something like 34 So yeah, this sold for 32 plus shipping. So happy, happy with the sale. You know, I took maybe a month and a half to sell. Polar Ralph Lauren is a brand where a lot of the basics, you can still sell them, but like a basic black t-shirt or like a basic, you know, single color t-shirt 
you're probably, if you want it to sell reasonably quickly, you're probably going to be pricing it at $12.95 plus shipping. And be willing to send an offer at like nine or something like that. So if you can get it for a dollar or two and that's the kind of eBay store you want to run, then you can do that. I've done that before. However, some of the more unique styles can sell a lot quicker. So this one sold for nineteen ninety five plus shipping. It's a full price. And this is just a three color or four color striped, you know, navy blue, white, another shade of blue, green and yellow striped t-shirt. It's got the orange logo on it sold pretty quick i think within a couple of weeks again if you think i'm underpricing things let me know you know i personally like to get my money back quicker than than not and i like the fact that you know i'm usually checking the views on the back end and if something is overpriced um, then usually i'll know that because it's not getting any views um this one sold fairly quickly but it, i don't think the views were going crazy so i think it was properly priced now, on the subject of proper pricing, this is one where I kind of made a mistake, and I made the mistake twice, and then I realized my mistake and sold it pretty quick. So this sold for $50, but I had originally listed it for $24.95. It's a Nike SB Pro Dry Fit uh, skateboarding hat, uh, snapback, and I, when I found it, I found it at a thrift store. It was $5, and I was like, how is this still sitting here? This is guaranteed a $25 hat and that was pretty much all the thought I put into it I didn't comp it I got home I listed it I threw it up for $25 $24.95 plus shipping pretty much immediately within an hour I got an offer for 20 plus shipping I accepted it I was happy I was like all right that's great well the buyer canceled within a few minutes so I was like okay that's fine so then I relisted it for $24.95 and within an hour I got another offer and I was noticing it was getting a ton of views. So I got another offer for 20 plus shipping. And at that point, I declined that offer, checked comps and realized that these hats sell for anywhere from 25 to 120. So I listed it for $79.95 and it wasn't really getting any views after a couple hours because before it was getting a ton of views. So I knew that the price was a little bit off. So then I dropped it down to $59.95. And then I got an offer about an hour or two later for $50. Accepted that offer. So just a little bit of a lesson. Maybe maybe check comps sometimes. Every once in a while. Now these were a great buy that took a while to sell. Would I buy them again if the price was right 100%? But it, they did take about 3-4 to four months to sell. It's a brand called Innovate. I-N-O-V-8. Uh, rock light these are trail running shoes these are technical shoes these are you know very purpose-made shoes um, i had them listed for 59.95 and it did take a while but they ended up selling for 44 so i'm happy with that i think i got them in the 8 to 15 range because i had seen that's where comps were these were in great condition i maybe could have waited but i didn't it had been so long i was just like let me just get my money out of them and move on to the next thing now, this was a recent buy. This is one that I was really happy with. This is a Boss DR-01S Rhythm Partner. A lot of guitar players will use this when they're playing guitar and they want to have a drum machine, but they don't necessarily know how to jump into something like Logic, or they don't want to jump into something like a Logic or an Ableton or any other DAW uh, software to to create their own rhythm, or they don't have a drummer. What they do is they'll buy these kinds of drum machines. Now, considering that a lot of these... Uh, a lot of computers nowadays come with inexpensive or free um, audio engineering software. You can get it for free. I don't know if this is a great purchase, um, especially with YouTube backing tracks and everything like that. But at the same time, they do sell pretty well. I was at a thrift store. I saw this was for $60. I saw it was selling online for between $180 to $230. I listed it for $239.95 plus shipping because the other ones were listed for $239.95 free shipping but were not best offer so i knew that because i had the best offer on i would get some action it sold within about two days it sold for i believe 180 plus shipping um buyer received it got positive feedback back was very happy with this sale the lesson here and the thing that i want you to take away from this is music equipment music equipment can be extremely valuable stuff like guitar pedals stuff like drum machines stuff like DJ equipment, all of that can be very valuable. So just keep an eye out for it. If you see it, even if you don't know what it is, it should have the, the name or the label pretty clearly identified. Just look it up, check comps, same way that you always do. 
it's another brand I like to sell. It's nothing too crazy. This is a pair of Ted Baker men's 30 pants. I think it was like 30 by 30. And I have a measurement off screen to the right a little bit there. Sold for $19.95 plus shipping. Took a month or two to sell. And then it actually got returned and then sold again within about a week at the same price. So this is, you know, Ted Baker is not like the ba a brand where you're going to be making a ton of money per item. You're not making, you know, $50, $100, $150 per item. But if you want a consistent seller with a buyer base that's a little bit more primed towards a luxury product, then Ted Baker is a great brand. Again, you're probably going to be selling it in the 15 to 30 range, unless it's something very unique or a very large size. But if you want something that's a very consistent seller and you're able to get it in like the 2 to $6 range, you can't really go wrong with that. This actually was one that I was really, really surprised when I saw it at the thrift store. This was $8. So this is a Kate Spade red black floral tote purse and I think it was eight inches deep by 12 inches long and I originally listed this for around $129.95 and I ended up dropping the price because it wasn't getting a lot of action and the way that I do the way that I kind of measure that is not only by views but also like if I'm getting any offers on it and if I'm getting views but not offers I know the price is off and that's kind of what was happening with this. I was getting a lot of views, but nobody was putting in any offers. So then I gradually, over a couple of weeks, dropped the price down to $79.95. I believe it sold for $50 plus shipping was what it finally sold for. I just, I had had it for a couple of weeks and, I, you know, $8 into $50. i am more than happy to do that. And somebody got a great deal. Um, signer handbag. It had a little bit of wear on it. You can see even in the bottom right corner. Uh, so it definitely wasn't in perfect condition, but for my perspective, turning 8 into 50, I'll do that every day of the week. All right, so you probably already know about this, but some of the vintage Wrangler pearl snap shirts, the Western pearl snap shirts, can go for a decent amount of money, generally around 25 to 30 bucks. I didn't believe this one sold. Um, I think I ran a, a little bit of a discount on it. It was caught up in a store-wide sale, and I believe it sold at full price. I don't think there was an offer on this. This was just like a blue-brown plaid one. Um, I believe also it had the brush popper um, tag on it, or maybe I just um, pulled that from another listing. But anyways, these kinds of things, you'll consistently sell these in the 25 to 30 range. Price it higher than that, unless it's very specific, you might have a hard time with it. But in this range, you won't have too many issues. Now, one thing that you'll notice is sometimes your eye will see something and you're like, that's interesting. And I recommend that you trust that instinct and you learn to trust that instinct. I was at a thrift store and on my way out, I just saw these really loud pair of tropical golf pants that they had, they had palms and they had cheetahs on them, just all different kinds of jungle themes to it. I was like, that's very interesting. So I went and looked it up and it was actually Polo Ralph Lauren. And I believe I initially listed these for $79.95. I believe they got caught up into a 20 or 30% off sale, a 20% off sale of my store. And I believe they ended up selling in around the $50 range. I believe I got them for 10 bucks. So this is the kind of thing where it's just so unique. It has such a specific buyer, the kind of person who will wear really loud golf pants where because of that alone, it has value, um, obviously with the brand, but sometimes just because it's so loud and so garish, it, it ends up having value just because of that. So this was cool. I haven't really seen these before. It's cool to know that they're out there, and I am happy to get this to the right person because that's not me. Probably already know this. Diesel jeans, stable, good seller. And these are the Diesel Safado. I believe I ended up selling them for like 25 plus shipping. Uh, 28 by 30 blue wash denim pants. Nothing too crazy. Uh, these sell in the 30 to, in like the 25 to 40 range pretty consistently. If you wanted to squeeze, you could get towards 40. But again, you know, I got them for probably 8 bucks and was more than happy to take 25 on them. These are a pair of men's like nylon workout joggers the brand is asrv i believe it's local here to san diego and i believe the buyer was also in san diego but i got these for i don't know something like four to six bucks they sold for 30 bucks i believe it was um on, a, on an offer 
and fairly quick within a week or two so i don't know if this is something that you would find around town regularly it was the only time that i saw it i just thought it seemed interesting and seemed to have good quality so i looked it up and it was worthwhile i don't know if i would find it again i don't know if you would find it but if you do keep an eye out for it now you likely know about this brand figs figs technical collection it's a lot of um, workwear for medical professionals scrubs etc this was a jacket of theirs and i forget the exact name give me just a second yeah, so it's the Bellery Jacket, B-E-L-L-E-R-Y. And this sold, I believe, let me check. So yeah, this sold for full price within a week or two. I think I got it for around 5 to 10 bucks. It sold for thirty nine ninety six plus shipping within a week or two. Could have been more aggressive with the pricing, but that seemed to be about the middle to kind of average of where these were selling for. And again, more than happy to get it going rather than wait for the extra 10 bucks. Now, if you're not looking at sealed board games when you're at the thrift store, you're literally throwing money away. This is a game called Moods. I hadn't heard of it. I got it for $5. It took about three months to sell, but it sold for, I believe, $35. It ended up selling for $39.95 plus shipping. I think I had a store discount that it got caught up in, so then somebody put an offer. So, um, it was sealed. I got it for five bucks. The comps were in the, the 45 to 60 range, but you know, again, I'm more than happy to sell it at 39.95 plus shipping and get it on its way, especially with me buying it for five bucks. Now, this is one that I probably underpriced, and I thought that I had checked comps and that I kind of put it squarely in the middle. But this is a brand called Grayson. It's a men's golf shirt. This is men's XL. This one was a navy blue striped one. I listed it for $19.95. It sold within the day, probably within a couple hours. So I probably should have listed it at like $24.95 or $29.95. But at the same time, I was happy that it sold that quick. So I'm not particularly mad. Again, if you think I'm underpricing things, if you've sold these before and you think that I'm crazy for what I'm pricing these at, let me know. If I'm throwing away money by underpricing stuff, I'm just more than happy to hear um, to hear the feedback and maybe adjust. And Maybe in a future video, you won't yell at me as much. But I'm excited to just, you know, I'm I'm always happier to have something sold quickly, even if I miss out on a couple bucks on it. So while when this sold, immediately my first instance was like, oh, I probably underpriced that. At the same time, I also know that my margin was fine on it, so I'm perfectly okay with it. Similar situation here. This is a brand called Proof, and I actually did not know about the brand, but it, when I was just at the store going through the polos, I felt it, and I was like, oh, this feels good, and I looked at the tag, and it was Merino. And these sell for around 30 to 40 This one also sold really quickly. I believe it was on offer. I, I had it at twenty nine ninety five, and I think I took an offer at around 25 or 24 something like that. Sold within a day or two maybe even same day so kind of same thing maybe i underpriced it but at the same time more than happy to get it going more than happy to get it to the right home and these are the kinds of things where when you're going through a rack at a thrift store most people do not think of this it's not like you're sitting there being like somebody's like oh they're taking all the cool stuff this shirt had been there for weeks i can promise you this shirt had been there for weeks people do not know material if it, they don't know material if they don't know the brand they're not going to actually buy it. This is a basic, simple gray shirt, but it is a Merino performance blend. So similar to a brand like Arcteryx, where the people that know it go crazy for it. But the thing is, most other people do not know the brand. They do not know the value. They're at the thrift store looking for a trendy vintage shirt that they can show off to their friends or that they can sell online or they can take to a buy, sell, trade store etc 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 and a lot of these basics these valuable technical basics most people just skip over so don't get mad at me about being like oh like uh taking all the good stuff like i'm telling you i skip so many things when i'm buying i can go through an entire rack and just take a couple items sometimes now this one I thought was a really good find initially, and it was, but I'm realizing more and more that I kind of got lucky. So this is a Logitech K800 keyboard. 
This sold seventy nine ninety five. It sold full price. I don't think there was an offer on it. I'm not gonna check, but it sold pretty much for full price, pretty much within a day or two. Now, since then, I've paid a little bit more attention to keyboards and have looked them up because I got this for three dollars and ninety five cents. And what I've realized is that a lot of the other Logitech keyboards only sell for like fifteen to twenty five. So, kind of got lucky with this one and. I will say that a lot of the Logitech keyboards, they have like a USB receiver that you need to connect. And so this one, I clarified that it didn't have the USB receiver um, or the unifying dongle. I just looked at some of the other listings and I saw that if I spent the 15 to $20 and waited a few days to get that off of Amazon, this would have sold for like 120 But I, if I didn't do that and just made sure that it plugged in and turned on and off, that I would be able to get 80 for it. So I was just like, why would I spend the extra 15 bucks just to make an extra 15 bucks? Like, let me just get this going. And I did. So I sold it for 79.95, full price, got feedback. And the customer was happy, no problem. All right, just a few more. So this is going back to the Wrangler Western shirt. So this is a Wrangler Red is the sub brand. And this is, it was kind of like a chambray cotton, like one of the softer cottons. It's a pearl snap blue Western shirt. You know, a lot of, just culturally there's a lot of western themes on trend right now you know one you have like the whole entire country cowboy all of that you know southern culture but then on top of that you have artists like pharrell who's leading up louis vuitton and who's bringing a lot of western wear into the louis vuitton line you have artists like beyonce who's putting out a country album and just put out a pretty big country single so just the western theme is in right now and a lot of the Wrangler Western wear is stuff that you can consistently sell for somewhere in the 25 to 30 range without much issue so this one you know again we I've talked about in previous video the idea of keyword stacking so you know this one it's Wrangler jeans it's Wrangler jeans red it's chambray denim it's pearl snap it's western so like if it was just any one of those alone, I wouldn't have bought it. But because I'm when I'm buying, I'm looking and asking, what are the keywords for this? How many keywords can I justifiably apply to this item? And when I'm able to get to a certain point where I have enough of them, then an item like this, a brand like Wrangler, where there's tons of Wrangler stuff that you should not buy. But when you find the right ones, you really should. And also be aware that the the vintage Wrangler, the older Wrangler stuff is also pretty valuable. It's also some of their older jeans you can. And that's an area that I don't know too much about. So I'm not going to give you any recommendations. But I do know that there are some older Wrangler jeans that can be really valuable. Nice simple sale here. Went to TJ Maxx. I don't go there all that often. Grabbed a pair of Peter Millar Crown Crafted Salmon Red Pants. Simple Pants. Uh, the MSRP on them was 198. I got them for 20 bucks. They took two months to sell. Sold them for full price. The guy also bought a baseball card off of my store. It was kind of a funny combination of a pair of pants and a baseball card, but he seemed really happy and giving positive feedback afterwards. So I'm happy to do that. All right, trains. If you already know that trains are a huge, huge collector's item, especially if you can get a complete and from the right brand. Brands like Lionel, brands like Bachman are ones that you should keep an eye out for. There are also others. I'm not an expert at all. I was at a thrift store. I saw that this was there. They originally had it marked at like the 100 to 150 range, I think, or 160 range. And I passed on it. And I went back to that same store a couple weeks later. And they had it marked down to 100. And I was like, hey, do you have any room on that? And they said, yeah, we can do 60. Now at 60, I bought it. I got it listed. It sold within two days for two twenty and some change. So, very happy. Model train collectors are a very special breed, where they are extremely dedicated. They know exactly what they like, and if it's the right thing, they will pay pretty heftily for it. So, most model trains also like if you don't have the box and all of the identifiers, they'll have a number on the side of the train that you can use so it'll should have the brand as well as a number on the side of the brain that you can the uh, on the side of the train that you can use to identify exactly what it is there also is different scales like different rail types so the ho scale is what this one was and where i think a lot of the more valuable trains are but again i'm not an expert with that 
This was a good sell, but I don't know if I would do it again. I think this ended up selling for like thirty-seven fifty. It's a brand called Palomando. It was a, uh, it was a cashmere sweater. I ended up having it for a few months, uh, probably closer to six months. It ended up selling okay. I thought the sell through was stronger than it was. I don't know. If, I mean, if it was a few bucks, I would buy it again because why not? But I think I would be a little bit more aggressive with my pricing to make it sell a bit quicker. And But it is it is a good brand. It is good quality. You can't really go wrong with it. But you might just be sitting it on it for a while because it is so sp specific of a brand. Now this right here, this is a brand called St. John. Which is an extremely high end Nordstrom brand. This was a cardigan that retailed at $1,000 and 1195 I bought it, I was at a thrift store and they had like a specialty rack and I was going through that and I think they had like 100 or 150 on it and I said, hey, like, this is interesting but I'm not interested in paying that, what would you what would you give that to me for? And they said 50 and I said, okay. I initially listed it for $399.95, didn't get much action, I dropped it down to $299.95, didn't get much action, I dropped it down to $199.95, didn't get much action until I got an offer for $150 which I accepted. More than happy to 3x on that. So, you know, just a basic cardigan. One of the things that I think really knocked the value on this was that it was not 100% um, wool. A lot of their stuff is 100% wool, and this was not. So that was something that, would I buy it again? I mean, sure, yeah, 100%. You know, their, um, their new with tag stuff sells well. But really, with this brand, you want to really pay attention to the material because the most valuable stuff is going to be the stuff that's 100% wool. Now, ignore the terrible picture. Um, this is, and this I, the reason the picture sucked was because I actually washed this and got one of those like silk um, honeycomb things that you can put silk into in the, in the washer and dryer so it doesn't get tore up. I would recommend getting those if you are ever washing silk. Um, so, it sold fine. I've actually, I was at the bins and somebody uh, tossed over two sets of these Everjay uh, silk pajama sets and they were like, hey, this is interesting. I was like, yep, this is interesting. And so I sold them. I sold both pairs, sold them relatively quick within two to six weeks for each pair. I listed them separately because I listed one just to see how it would go. And then after that sold, I listed the other. Just used the same listing because they were the same size and measurements and everything like that. Um, both sold in like the 50 to 60 range. Something along those lines. Now last, we'll end with a fun one. So these are a Skechers and One Piece collaboration. The Monkey D. Luffy character collaboration. These ended up selling for, I want to say, somewhere in the 45 to 50 range. I know I got them for 12. I had them for a while. Probably 4 to 6 plus months. Not, not, I didn't have them for longer than 6 months. But probably 4 to 6 months. And again, you know, perfectly fine sale. In terms of the numbers, the sell-through rate was a lot slower than I expected. I got them right when the One Piece show was coming out on Netflix. So I, um, like the the live action, I think they had a live action one. So I thought that they would sell a lot quicker than they did. You know, these kinds of things, they're very specific. You know, I thought that they would go a lot quicker than they did. Would I buy it again? Yes. Would I buy it again at 12? I would think about it. Probably would still do it again. But it took a little bit longer than I expected. So what was your favorite item today? Is there something that you didn't know about that now you're going to be keeping an eye out for? Is there something that you think I'm underpricing or maybe overpricing, etc.? If you have any feedback, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the fun things for YouTube. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Share this with a friend if you think this is helpful. And I'll talk to you later.